At the beginning of the movie, we see a woman who has recently overdosed. Her young daughter Rose enters her room and witnesses her mother's body lying in the mat. In the present day, Rose Cotter is abruptly awakened by a phone call. She now works as a therapist and has a session with a manic patient named Carl, who continuously mutters about people dying and that he is going to die. Attempting to console him, Rose reassures Carl that his experiences, while feeling real, cannot harm him. However, Carl persists in his distress. Shortly after, Rose receives a call for an appointment with a young woman named Laura Weaver. A doctor briefs Rose on Laura's case, mentioning her involvement in an incident the previous week. In this incident, a professor at her school gruesomely killed himself with a hammer, and Laura was the sole witness to the event. Rose visits Laura and finds her huddled in a corner. Introducing herself, Rose attempts to calm Laura and inquire about her experiences. Laura reveals that she sees something no one else can, taking on the forms of familiar people or strangers. Rose questions if Laura sees it right now, to which she responds negatively. When asked what happens when she sees it, to which Laura says it smiles, but not a friendly smile. She says it tells her things and that today she is going to die. Rose calms her down and tries to explain to her that sometimes when we experience intense trauma, our mind tends to see things. But after turning away from Rose and looking, Back, Laura begins panicking and freaking out. Rose looks back and sees no one there, and seeing Laura's condition, she calls for help. But when she looks back, she finds that Laura has picked up a broken shard from a vase and is now flashing an unsettling grin. She then starts slashing her throat and kills herself, leaving Rose in shock, and then the help arrives there. Later Rose speaks to two detectives for details on the event, and one of them named Joel is her ex. She tells them Laura was having paranoid delusions. She was convinced that some sort of evil presence was haunting her, and before she died, she was smiling. Next, Rose goes to her home that she shares with her fiancé Trevor and their cat Mustache. At night, she was so disturbed by today's incident that she sees Laura at her home smiling and looking at her. Suddenly she gets startled by Trevor and he asks her what's wrong, to which Rose tells him that one of her patients died today. The following evening, Rose and Trevor join her sister Holly and husband Greg for dinner, where Holly chastises Rose about forgetting Holly's son Jackson's upcoming birthday, but Rose, still traumatized by Laura's incident, reacts sharply. The next day, Rose tries to move forward by returning to work. Rose visits the reception to request the police report on a different incident involving Laura. While reading the report, she receives a call from her sister Holly, and they apologize for their earlier argument. As Rose gazes out the window, she seemingly spots someone resembling Laura in the distance. Holly asks Rose to at least get a birthday gift for Jackson. Later, as Rose passes Carl's room, she notices him with a disturbing smile similar to Laura's. When she attempts to talk to him, Carl repeatedly warns her, stating, you're going to die. Distressed, Rose calls for help, but to her surprise, Carl is found asleep, leading to his restraint by orderlies. Rose's supervisor, Dr. Morgan Desai expresses concern about her mental well-being and grants her a paid week off. On her way back home, Rose stops by a shop to buy a gift for Jackson. Now that night at home, she gets startled when suddenly the security alarm goes off. She turns off the alarm and sees that the back door of her house is open. Suddenly the phone rings and a lady says that she is calling from the security service. She asks her some unsettling questions, and it turns out to be a malicious entity that taunts her. She asks her to look back and the phone rings again, shocking Rose. Later, while listening to Laura's recording, she detects a strange voice in it. When she raises the volume, she hears her name, and Laura appears to haunt her, causing Rose terror. Trevor comes out hearing her screams and gets shocked seeing Rose holding the knife and he urges her to put down the knife. The following day, Rose seeks guidance from her therapist Dr. Madeline, sharing her distressing experiences. Madeline suggests that Rose's feelings of being stuck might stem from her mother's suicide and asks if she still blames herself for it. Rose discloses that since Laura's incident, she has been seeing and hearing things, specifically Laura. Madeline explains to Rose that her current experiences are likely a result of Laura's incident triggering old anxieties. Over the weekend, Rose attends Jackson's birthday party. When Jackson opens her gift, expecting a toy train, he finds Mustache's lifeless body instead. Rose is shocked and attempts to convince everyone that she didn't cause this, but during the chaos, she perceives one of the other moms displaying the entity's evil grin, invisible to others. Startled, Rose stumbles backward, falling through a glass table. She is taken to the hospital for medical attention. 
Morgan visits Rose after learning about her episode and suggests she take time off work. When Trevor brings her home, Rose tries to explain that an evil spirit or energy is threatening her, having caused harm to her patient and now attaching itself to her. However, Trevor dismisses her, believing she is losing her mind and accusing her of killing Mustache. Rose initiates an investigation, searching for information about Laura's professor, Gabriel Munoz. During her search, she hears a faint voice calling her name. Upon switching off the light, she recognizes the voice of her deceased mother standing behind her. The next day, Rose visits Gabriel's widow, Victoria, who reveals that Gabriel had claimed to see haunting visions before mysteriously disappearing and later being found dead. Gabriel had described these visions as something trying to get inside of him. Victoria shows Rose sketches and a painting related to Gabriel's experiences. Victoria explains that Gabriel's visions began after he witnessed a woman die by suicide. When Rose mentions her own similar experiences, Victoria misunderstands and accuses Rose of mocking her tragedy, demanding her to leave. Rose then visits Joel for help in her investigation and asks him if he can find out if Gabriel had been involved in any other recent police reports. Despite his initial reluctance, he agrees to help her and looks up at Angela Powell and finds that she died by gouging her eyes out. She gets shocked to see her picture and asks him to do the same search on Angela. He searches further and tells her that Angela saw a man commit suicide too, which is shown in security footage from a gas station where a man impaled himself in front of Angela, and when they rewind the footage, they see a creepy smile on that man's face. When Rose returns home, she finds that Trevor has called Madeline to provide a house call session since they are concerned about Rose's mental state. Rose snaps at Trevor, saying that he is more concerned with how she is going to make him look, leading to her storming out and breaking up with him. She then visits Holly and tells her that she has been cursed. She explains to her how it got transferred to her through Laura, but Holly says she is having sort of a breakdown and this is what exactly happened with their mom. Rose fires back that she never attempted to be there for their mother and that she had to take care of her until the end. Rose goes back to the car and appears to see Holly walk back to her, but it is just the entity haunting her. That night, Joel calls her and tells her that he found 20 same cases involving 19 suicides of the victims with a direct line linking them all together. One of the victims Robert watched his business partner commit suicide in front of him, and four days later Robert murdered a stranger woman, but the eyewitness of the murder committed suicide, and the pattern resumed. Rose and Joel visit Robert in jail, where she lies to him that she has a patient. Four days ago a man killed himself in front of her and since then she has been seeing something that pretends to be other people. Robert asks her to make the cop leave, and he will tell her what he knows. Now after Joel leaves, Robert explains that the only way to break the chain is to kill someone else in front of a witness to whom the curse will transfer. When Rose tells him that she cannot kill anyone, Robert freaks out and thinks that Rose brought the entity with her, forcing him to be restrained. Now when she comes back home, she gets a call from Madeline, which she ignores. Later, she gets a text from Trevor reading they need to talk. After some time, Madeline visits her house and tells her that she needs to convince her that she is not a danger. Now she starts an impromptu therapy session and during this, the phone rings and Rose gets to shock to hear Madeline on the other side. This turns out to be the entity in disguise, it grins at her telling her that it is almost time. Fearing she has no choice, Rose drives to her job with a knife. She goes into the building and finds Carl's room, and when Carl looks back, he gets terrified and starts screaming. She tries to calm him down and only then Morgan runs in and sees Rose stabbing Carl repeatedly with that knife. He screams and appears to tear his face off but this is just a nightmare that Rose had after she passed out in her car. Then Morgan comes there and asks her to come inside, but she drives away when Morgan sees her, along with the knife in her car. She gets a call from Joel and tells him that she has to isolate herself in order to stop the entity from spreading to anybody else. Joel asks her where she is, but she disconnects the call. She drives up to her childhood home where her mother died, and she finds that there is no electricity. She then enters her mother's room, and we see a flashback of her childhood, where her mother asks her to call for help, but Rose denies it and runs away. Now when it is dark, she hears some sounds, and when she goes to check, she finds her mother crying in her room. She gets up and says sorry to her, and that she has not been a good mom. She asks if she is ashamed of her, and why didn't she save her? To which Rose says she was afraid of her and she was a monster. She said she has carried the guilt of her death for her entire life, and now she has to let it go. The entity then starts grinning, and Rose asks her why she is doing this to her, to which it says because her mind is so inviting. 
The entity then turns into a tall, long-haired monstrous version of her mother who is always smiling. The entity follows and attacks Rose and tells her she can't escape her own mind. But Rose fights back and breaks its arm and sets it on fire by throwing a lantern at it and runs out of the house as it burns. She then goes to Joel's apartment and apologizes for dragging him into all this and what she did to him and their relationship was not fair. She asks him if she can stay here and just sleep and if will he stay with her while she sleeps. To which Joel says he will stay with her forever and he flashes a creepy smile. He then rushes to attack her and when she runs out of the house, she finds herself back outside her mother's house. Just then Joel calls her out and terrified Rose runs back inside the house. Joel asks her to open the door and Rose again encounters the entity inside the house. It approaches her and tears its face off, before stretching Rose's jaw open and entering her mouth. Joel breaks the door and enters the house, and finds Rose dousing herself with kerosene. She turns around, flashing her own creepy smile, and she lights herself on fire in front of a horrified Joel, and the movie ends here. Thanks for joining us on our horror movie recap adventure. If you enjoyed the chills, subscribing would mean a lot. Drop a comment to share your thoughts and keep the terror alive. Stay spooky and see you soon.